Hey guys, welcome back to some more AFK Arena. In today's video, we've entered a new year. So as I like to do every year is update the beginner's guide because the game changes a lot throughout the course of a year. So this is gonna be the 2021 beginner's guide. We're gonna go through all the basic features of the game, give you some tips along the way, things you might wanna look at, heroes you might wanna build and stuff like that. So let's get into it. And just quickly before we get into it, we did hit 105,000 subscribers. So like all the previous 5,000 subscriber milestones, we are gonna do a $100 giveaway. Once again, thank you guys so much. Like the growth is ridiculous. Even like since we hit the 100,000, it's just gotten even quicker. So I really do appreciate the support. To enter the draw, just be subscribed and leave a comment. Um, don't spam because multiple comments don't give multiple entries. Uh, all the legally stuff will be in the description. We'll do the draw roughly around a week from the time of uploading this and announce a winner. Good luck to everyone and let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing to talk about is re-rolling. You can re-roll in this game. Um, some people have trouble with clearing data to actually remove the save file off the game. Um, if that's the case, the best way to do it, I think, would be to get an emulator, LD player, blue stacks, um, knock, something like that, and create new instances to be able to re-roll. Or you can just go to different servers. So we go settings, select servers over here. If you hit all servers, it'll give you the most recent servers. You can select through anything you want. The highest number is the most recent server. Server PVP brackets are based on those servers. So I always like to roll on the most recent server. Some people like to go on an older server if they're more casual and not as stressed about it. So that's that. Um, now, with your summons, so when you do reroll, you'll get one f first summon for free. It's going to be a guaranteed purple. You can't do anything about that summon. What you get is what you get. It is different, but you can't change your wish list for it. However, after that first summon, you can change your wish list. So this is the wish list. Basically, anything that you summon from um, any purple that you summon that's going to be from diamonds, faction scrolls, normal scrolls, or friendship pools, they are guaranteed to be from this wish list. So you can set up five heroes for each faction and know that you're always going to summon one of them. Now, this is my staple wish list that I'm looking at on my fresh account that I've just started. So if you want a rough idea of what to look at and you're a new player and you're just like, just give me something so I can get started and then I'll work it out from there. That is my basic wish list. Uh, you can copy that if you want. Um, but I do update videos every once in a while on the most optimal wish list and stuff like that for what I would use. Moving on from that, just don't do single diamond summons. Uh, single diamond summons do cost 300, whereas a temple is 2,700. So you're actually wasting diamonds if you do single pulls on those. Uh, moving on from that, let's just jump into campaign. So campaign for beginners, this is your general home. You click the chest, you get your AFK loot. AFK loot, depending on your VIP rank, which does go up as you progress free to play, um, it will actually allow you to store for longer. Um, 12 hours is like the baseline. Uh, it does go up to like 24, 36. Like it goes up to a massive amount of time uh, the longer you play the game. But for the early stages, make sure you log in every 12 hours to collect that loot if you don't want to overcap it and miss out. This here, we also do have just your general campaign progression. Um, just some basic tips for this is, when you're playing along, you normally wanna have a carry hero built. So for me, it's Damon up here. Um, as you can see, I've leveled him to 115. The rest of my team is around the level 80. Now, the reason I do this is because he's gonna be my main damage source, but also if it's a damage dealer, it allows you to put them into the front row. Some other decent uh, damage dealers to look at would be uh, something like Iron here. He's pretty good if you get the copies of him. Uh, also, we have another main one that I do like to look for if you get from Wilders is going to be Soros. He's really strong, really strong in boss battles as well, but not bad to invest in early on as well. Uh, there is Damon, who I am currently using. He's a really good carry hero. Uh, and then we also do have, uh, if we go up here, Shamira. Now, Shamira, I've, I used to recommend highly. Now, I don't recommend her as much uh, due to the fact that we're going to jump over and go across a little bit. But those are some of the carry heroes. But over here in the store, now we have all these different stores. We have the guild store, the barracks, the labyrinth store. You can get Shamira over here, as you can see. However, lately in the game, when they do collaborations, you get dimensional heroes, which to get them as free to play, you have to do this exchange, which is going to cost a lot of those labyrinth points. If, you ever, if you're ever playing the game and one of these events is on and you can save these resources over 60 days to get these heroes, they are limited heroes and I highly recommend going for them as opposed to anything else. And that's why I don't recommend Shamira as much. She's not very good late game. 
Um, she's really good early game. However, the reason she used to pri get prioritized was because she was easy and reliable to get the copies of to build. However, now because of these, I don't recommend her as much because these events are always worth getting whatever dimensional is on sale for those events. So now we just jump back into the campaign. So like I said, you're going to want to use normally a, dam a damage dealer that's power leveled, a tanky unit on the other front row uh, that can be used. And then normally I like to bring three supports for the other spots. Uh, you don't bring, I don't bring other damage dealers as much because they're not going to deal so much damage because they're going to be lower level. So you've got one main unit that's going to be dealing all that damage for your team. Another tanky type of unit that's going to sort of mitigate some damage and help your team survive a little bit. And then three supports that are going to allow those two to either survive or deal damage. That's the basic formation for early game like I said one of them leveled above the rest now when we look at those heroes we're going to be building and we talk about building them up and having the copies you have different ascension levels you have elite which is the purple like this um, like all these guys are then you have elite plus which have the little gold things in the corners of them you can see little gold things in the corner then we do have legendary which is these guys uh, and as you can see i need an elite plus copy of rowan to be able to ascend him to legendary plus so basically the progression goes you have elite elite plus legendary legendary plus mythic mythic plus and then ascended and then once you get ascended you can add stars to get something to Ascended, which is the end goal, you're going to need a total of eight copies of that hero. So just keep in mind, uh, you do not want to be feeding Ascended tier heroes away to upgrade other Ascended tier heroes. Sometimes you can if you really don't want to build the hero, but just keep in mind, if you feed them, you lose them. You do need eight copies of a hero to build them to what's essentially finished. Past that, you can get them to five star, but the stat bonuses aren't as major. So those ascended tier heroes are anything in here when we look at ascended tier heroes down to this point here, uh, there. And then once we go down here, these are the legendary tier heroes. And these guys are the ones you summon as blue. And they're basically fodder. You can feed them to anything. Not worry about them. You keep getting them. These guys can only go up to legendary plus, which is a level cap of 160. Whereas these guys can go 240 and beyond. So 160, they're pretty much food for most of the game. So you can just keep feeding them to upgrade your other heroes. Um, I've got a full ascension guide out there if you want to look that up. Um, which goes more in depth into that ascension uh basically topic and shows you exactly what you need for every ascension okay so back here on the campaign screen so um like i said with those teams don't be afraid to mix around your team positioning stuff like that it really does make a difference swapping the positions of your units in the game next up we have a friends list so basically the easiest way to get friends to fill out your friends list as you can see we have 40 spots on the list you can send and receive um hearts every day that's how you do friendship summons so make sure you fill out this friends list uh as soon as you can the way you do that the easiest way is just to come over to here to chat click this one here you go down here we have emotes and you can just hit the add me one and then people will hopefully add you or you can look for other people who've posted the add me and you can just click on their name and then in the bottom right here we can click add and that is how you add them obviously my friends list is full so i can't um besides that have your quests the quests are very self-explanatory do those every day obviously the dailies then we have the weeklies and then we have campaign ones, which are just one-time completion that you get some really nice rewards for. But the basic thing here is progress as far as you can. The further you do progress in this, the better the AFK rewards you get. And on top of that, in the bags, you can see that we have these resources, um, these chests that we can exchange. These are exchanged based on your current campaign progression. So the amount you get from these will increase the further in the campaign you are. So you don't want to use these unless you're at a roadblock for progression. So for instance here, you can see my Rowan, I need I need like another 57 dust to actually level him up and limit break him. So what I'm going to do there is go ahead here, jump in here, go, I need 57 dust, that gives me 65. I can use that one, then I can go to my Rowan and I can level him up. Now I'm not going to use any, other, uh, any of those other resources until I'm stuck in campaign and it will allow me to level up a character further. That's the only time I use these resources, otherwise save them. For the gold ones, only use them if you're broke on gold and have something you want to buy. That is the general rule of thumb of those because if I just exchanged all of these right now, but I didn't need the stuff, I'm just losing out on resources that I would have had if I exchanged it later on. Moving on from that, we do have this fast rewards function um, for this one. Use this towards the end of the day, especially in the early stages, because it once again gives you 120 minutes of 
resources. It's based on your progression in the game. In the first day, you can get up to like chapter five, six, or seven. Don't use it when you're on chapter one or two. Wait until the end of the day and then collect it um, because that's when you're going to get the best rewards. You can see here, my, my day is about to reset. You can see when it resets so you know what time you've got to use it by. So if I hadn't used it now, I would be using it right now because I've only got three minutes left and I'm not going to make much progression past it that moving on into the dark forest we have the bounty board it's very self-explanatory you go here you just it's just a dispatch mode where you dispatch things eventually uh through free to play you can unlock it as well eventually you will get auto dispatch where it just auto fills everything for you and then it's just basically free resources from there in the early game it's a bit of a hassle a bit annoying but hey you get through it Next up in the arena, the normal arena. Now make sure you use the, the weeks over here so I can't actually get into a battle, but make sure you use all your free battles every day, um, especially in the early game because you can get some nice resources and you have a chance at getting a chest which can have some nice rewards. It's free, just fight the weakest enemy, win it quickly and then take your rewards. It's pretty much all there is. Legends Challenger Tournament. Now you do unlock that after completing chapter 9-20. Getting to that is really nice. Set of defense, it's three teams versus three teams. You won't have three teams built or anything like that. Don't stress about it at all. Set of defense, play some battles, go as far as you can in it um, because that is going to give you challenger coins which will be used to exchange at the challenger store later on and we'll go through all the stores in a minute. So just once you unlock that, like I said, make your defense, go as far as you can, get as high as you can and then basically sit at it. Legends Championship, most people won't have to worry about that for a long time. That's a very end game thing. So Moving on to that, we have King's Tower. For the early stages, this is all you're going to have to worry about. It's kind of like campaign. You just progress them side by side, keep progressing. You defeat stages, you get rewards, and it's pretty basic. Just push as far as you can. Once you're stuck, you're stuck. It's the same as campaign. You might have to wait, get some AFK rewards, stuff like that, and then you can keep progressing. Once you get further into the game, there will be faction towers. There's a faction tower for the four main factions, Lightbearers, uh, Maulers, Wilders, and Graveborn. You can do all them in those ones. You're only allowed to use heroes of that faction, but it explains it once you unlock it at that point. Next up, Arcane Labyrinth. Resets every two days. Make sure you get this done. Really nice rewards. Gives you experience. Labyrinth coins. A lot of good stuff. And like I said, Labyrinth coins. We'll go through that store in a minute. We've already touched on it, but we will go through there again. Then we have the Voyage of Wonders. Now, this unlocks after I think chapter 620. Um, so fairly early in the game, in your first day or two of play, you can get it. These are events, as you can see, this one ends in nine days. They're rotating events that they have. There's normally one on. You don't normally go more than a week without one of these on. They're sort of puzzle type events that you go into where, you know, there's different puzzles, different battles, as you can see that you've got to get through. And then you can get some really nice rewards from them. So if there's one on, get into it. Later on in the game, you will unlock something called the Misty Valley, which resets every month, which is just defeat enemies with certain requirements and you get rewards. Very self-explanatory once you get into it. It's not a very early game thing, so I'm not going to go in depth into it. Next up, we have Peaks of Time. So these unlock based on your campaign progression. As you can see, this one will unlock at stage 9-4, which I've done. This one's 10-4, which I haven't done. But I can't get into this one yet because I've got to complete, uh, I think it's 60% of the previous one before I can do it. These, once again, are very maze type um, things that are the same the whole way through. And you basically just do the maze, get the rewards, and then move on to the next one. Uh, you can click here and see what the rewards are. This is how you do get artifacts, which are things you can equip to your heroes to give them added effects. As you can see, this one, it gives me some stats. Grants 15 haste points for three seconds when a critical strike occurs. So if you've got heroes with crits, that one is going to be nice. Um, but moving on from that, we have the Wandering Balloon. Up, You don't get that till 2020. You'll be well past beginners by the time you get that. Trials of God, this one's way later in 2760. And then the 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 wondrous pouch this is the first one they've implemented here which is basically candy crush in afk arena so you can come in here do this um go begin and you'll see that it is pretty much candy crush in afk arena you meet the requirements you get stars and then you can get goodies you get clear rewards for clearing every stage and then as you get a certain amount of stars you can get some nice rewards as well so definitely jump in and do it like you, you unlock it very early and it gives you some nice rewards so definitely worth clearing as much of it as you can um, just to get those extra summons and stuff like that 
So that pretty much covers it for the Dark Forest. Moving on into the Ranhorn, um, we do have the Oak Inn up here. So you unlock the Oak Inn, um, and basically what you can do here is visit friends, which is very handy because you can visit friends, and as you can see on the right-hand side here, um, you've got the friends open. But this is my only friend at the moment that has gifts. You want to collect these ones with the red gifts. More will unlock along the along the day. Uh, we're just one minute past the reset, so they haven't gathered them all. But if you click here, you can do this three times. And as you can see, I just got 100 diamonds. So as soon as you do unlock this and you can see it, um, if you haven't unlocked it, you're in the first couple chapters and you'll see it there, but you can't actually get into it. Once you can get into it, make sure you come here every day and visit friends three times um, because you're going to be able to get some nice rewards like I said, the diamonds, you can get gold, you can get dust, stuff like that, which is going to help you out. And then later on, once you do get your first ascended tier hero, um, the Oak Inn is where you're going to be able to summon furniture. And basically, you can get more summons of this furniture. It's much later game that you're going to worry about this. So I'm not going to go too in depth into the Oak Inn. Um, but basically, you want to do those visiting friends as much as you can now, because that contributes towards a quest that will give you furniture summons later on in the game. Basically, go in there every day, visit three friends, get rewards. It helps you later on. Next up, we have the guilds. Join a guild as soon as you can. Um, when you, if, if, you have, if you're not in a guild yet, it'll come up with a bunch of guilds. A lot of them are instant join. If you don't have a guild made yet, or you don't have one to join, you can go on discords and stuff like that to find one or just jump into one. That's what I did on this account. I just jumped in one so I could start getting the rewards. So you want to go in here, do your guild hunt. Uh, it's basically a challenge. You get to do this twice per day. Uh, as you get further in the game, you will unlock a third attack that you can do every day. Just go in here, do, put your best possible team, basically just your strongest units in the early game. Do as much damage as you can. You'll get some gear and you will get uh, some gold and also some guild coins, which are imp important for exchanging later on. Moving on from that, we do have the library. Uh, we do have the elder tree, which unlocks fairly early in the game. I'm on like day three or four of my account and I have unlocked it. And as you can see, you can level this up. Once you get it to level 15, I believe it is, you do unlock access to upgrade these different trees. Um, that's a more in-depth topic in itself, but basically whatever your main units you're building are, look at that. Um, there are other guides out there for it, but that's a bit later on. So we're not going to stress too much about that. Unions, basically you add heroes into it. Um, you can use your friends heroes as well to do this. And as you add them in, when you use that, so the, the way these work, because it's sometimes confusing to newer players is whatever the bonuses you get here. For instance, for these three units, I get HP plus 12, uh, 1200 and HP plus 1%. That applies anywhere. Um, and it's just like an upgrade for those heroes individually. You don't have to be using them together to get that bonus. It's just those heroes get that bonus. It's a really nice feature to help upgrade the heroes that you currently have. For instance, over here, my main carry at the moment is the Daemon. So I can actually go ahead and get these bonuses. I just need to get a, um, a Nero up to Legendary Plus, and then I can get this extra HP attack and really help out my main carry. So those, that's all they are. Just fill them in with the best you can. Just basically go into them, anything that has a plus, click on it, put the highest ascension one you can in, and you will get those bonuses if you use those heroes. Then we have the resonating crystal. And this brings me to a very important, important point. When you're leveling up your heroes, never level more than five heroes because you unlock this crystal, which means the lowest level of your top five leveled heroes is going to be what the crystal level is, meaning that any other heroes you put down the bottom here, they will gain that level. Now, the other cool thing about this is for an elite hero, um, which is just the purple border, their level cap is 100. However, if your crystal is level 110, your elite heroes will actually go up to that 110. The only exception to this is those legendary tier heroes that do have a soft cap. Um, so these guys down here, they have a soft cap of 160. And if they are in the crystal and the crystal is at 180, they will still only be at 160. So they sort of fall off in that aspect. Next up, we have the rickety cart. Um, you can reset heroes. If you've leveled too many heroes, you can reset it. This one's level nine, so I haven't bothered resetting her because I won't get enough resources to warrant it. And you can retire. Just basically come over here. If you have any of the green border heroes, the common heroes, uh, basically just auto select and get rid of them. You do not need them. Um, and then tick this green one on, meaning that when you summon, uh, if you do get one of those green heroes, let's see if we can get one. We got a blue, damn it. That's all the summons. Actually, I got one more. Let's see if we can do it. 
So if you do get a green hero like this, it'll automatically feed it and you'll see it'll give you those resources instead. It'll give you hero coins and dust. So it's just, you do not need the green border common heroes. Just let them get fed. That's all there is to it. Wall of Legends, there's normally a collect all button down the bottom here. Just do it. It's basically, it's like a leaderboard and the further people get in the leaderboard, everyone gets free diamonds. So there's normally a collect all if you haven't collected it. So hit the collect all and you will get the goodies. Next up, pretty much the final thing that I want to cover for beginners is going to be the store. Now, over here, the top left, you will always see dust there for gold. That is always worth buying. If you do see these um, purple stones, there'll be five fragments of them. They, they cost diamonds. They're pretty much worth it all the time. Later on in the game, you do get a 40% discount and they only cost 90. I still buy them at the 115 diamond mark, I think. Uh, not sure. I haven't done the math, but I just buy them anyway. It's not the end of the world. Uh, later on, you will be able to get some Poe coins down here in this spot and some purple or gold signature item upgrade tokens here, which often I do buy. I always buy the Poe coins and I sometimes buy the signature item upgrades, but that is much later in the game. Guild store. So with guild store, barracks and uh, labyrinth store and later on the challenger store, I always... It, basically, if there is one of these dimensional events, like I said, always save for them and buy the dimensionals. It's the most important thing in my opinion because they are limited heroes. Besides that, guild store, never exchange anything until you start seeing mythic gear, which is the the um, the red border gear, the red, the red gear basically, it's called mythic gear. Only ever buy that and then once you get further, you can buy upgrade tokens for the mythic gear. In the barracks, uh, basically I only ever buy these purple stones. Uh, it resets monthly, so you're never really gonna go past the amount that you need to get. In the labyrinth store, uh, basic priority for me is getting Arthur. You need to purchase him for 60,000 four times because you only get 15 shards and then you can get Arthur. And then my next priority after that is gonna be Wukong normally because he is a celestial and really good value. Um, like I said, I used to suggest Shamira, but now I just like to go for Arthur and Wukong as my first two priorities. And now I just jumped over onto one of my other accounts, uh, which has unlocked the challenger store. And basically number one priority over here is gonna be Aziz. Um, this guy here, he's just absolutely fantastic later on. Just keep picking him up, he's really good. Uh, and then after that, you can choose between Flora down here or you can choose Athalia. That's just the most optimal way to exchange in that store. Um, besides that, if you click this drop down over here, this is where any events that come up are gonna pop up. So make sure you check the events tab at the time you're playing the game and just basically go through with any events that are in the game. Um, and on top of that, we do have the merchants. Basically over here, um, the first, I think like the first 15 or 20 days, you won't have this shop available. Then this shop will open up and you basically get this free pack every day. You get a weekly free pack and you also get a monthly free pack. So keep an eye out for them and get the free goodies. But that just about covers all the basics to the game for 2021. Hope that helps out some new players. If you're an experienced player and you have any other points you wanna uh, make, put it down the bottom um, and we can add those in to a pinned comment. But anyway, guys, Thanks for watching. I hope you have an awesome day and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Cheers.